phenomena uh, in the real world that I want you to keep in mind when we're thinking of these mathematical operations um, so that you can kind of stay grounded um, with uh, what it is that we're trying to use mathematics to describe. Imagine that you had a spring and uh, you compressed the spring. This would take some work because you would have to put a force on the spring and push it, uh, and so you'd have to be applying that force as you moved this uh, across some distance. Then if you put a mass on the spring and you let it go, then the spring would push back and uh, however much work you put in compressing the spring, the spring could do that same amount of work pushing um, some mass back. So what that means is while the spring is compressed, it has the potential to do work. The same thing happens with a counterweight. If I put some mass in this side of an elevator, then uh, if it was heavy enough, then you could get in the other piece of the elevator and um, the weight of the mass pulling down would actually pull you up in the elevator. Um, so because I did some work to move the mass up onto the higher elevator, I, I stored some energy in this system. So um, the mass has the potential to do some work. We know from uh, empirically testing things that the amount of energy that you store um, by moving something against the uh, force due to gravity only depends on the height of the object. This can seem a bit counterintuitive, but it's true. If you walked up this ramp until you arrived at the top of the little tower, this would be the same amount of work as if you climbed up the ladder. When you walk up the ramp, you have to walk a greater distance, but uh, the projection of gravity onto the direction that you're moving isn't very large, so you have to move a greater distance, but each step that you take requires less force. When you're climbing up the ladder, uh, you have to go a shorter distance, but you're moving exactly the opposite direction that gravity is pulling, so it's less distance, but each step that you take is going to require more force. I'm not telling you this because this is the way that math works. I'm telling you this because this is what we observe in the real world. So if we've made our mathematics assumptions correctly, then this should also be what happens when we do the math. Let's, let's find out. This is the force due to gravity, um, and I really don't know the answer to this, so we really are discovering this here together. I don't have this memorized. Um, I haven't done it in a while, so uh, I'm really curious. Let's see. Did we did we set this math up right? We're going to find the work done by gravity uh, in part A um, to move the particle from. Oh, this should be uh, this should be one two to move the particle from one two down to one zero. In this example, th this isn't like uh, as simple a thing as the uh, the like ramp pictures. Um, from the motivation, um, you know, the, these are like uh, objects floating around in space. The, the force due to gravity is all pointing towards the origin. Oh, I did my parameterization wrong. Um, I changed it, remember? I'm an idiot, uh, in case you forgot. Uh, um, so the, the particle needs to go from a height 2 down to a height 0, so I'm going to make that happen over the course of 2 seconds. Um, all right, we better check and make sure that we did this right. Um, so this is, uh, this is x, and this is y, and then this whole piece right here is m, and this is n. Um, this is the definition of work, and then this is the differential form. y is 2 minus t, so dy is negative 1 dt. I'm writing uh, m dx in terms of t. m is negative x over, and x is 1, so I get negative 1 over 
Uh, and then this is supposed to be x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. Now this path doesn't move in the x direction at all. So as t changes, um, dx doesn't change at all. So that's going to be 0 dt. All this goes away because of 0. These negatives cancel. Okay, the, the recording glitched of me uh, working out this uh, integral, and I don't want to do it over again, so I'm just going to walk you through it. I end up with this crazy expression, which is just screaming you sub at me. I just uh, subbed everything inside this 3 halves power for you. This negative 2 right here comes... Uh, the 2 comes from moving this out front, uh, and then the negative comes from the chain rule from that negative right there. I'm a change the limits of integration kind of guy. t equals 0, then u will be 1 plus 4, so u will be 5. If t equals 2, then uh, u will be 1 plus 0, so u will be 1. Then this is really u to the negative 3 halves power. Um, so I added 1 to the power and I got negative 1 half. Then you have to divide by the result. So dividing by negative 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by negative 2. And then these cancel and all you have to do is plug in the limits of integration. Now let's use this kind of zigzag path. Um, so we took a different path like in our ramp example and um, experiment tells us that we should get the same answer as when we went into the straight line path. I'm going to use additivity and break this path up into two pieces. So here I'm just doing C1, just the first part of the path. I'm not going to have room. Is this going to be a nightmare? All right, now I'm just guessing. It worked last time. Let's try it again. Uh, the just pick the bottom. Oh, please work. I feel like I might have mathed myself into a corner here. <laughs> no way. It's going to work. No way. Look, I'm trying to get this in the numerator. It's going to work. I'm going to factor out negative uh, 2. Okay. Whoa. It went, went off the rails here. So I got, ended up with the same limits of integration. Uh, so what that means is that this portion of the integral must be 0. Um, wow, that's crazy. So moving this took no work at all. Okay, I've lost all faith that this is going to work, so I'm just uh, soldiering on. Please, math, give me the right answer. A bunch of negatives going to cancel. I just blindly proceed as before. Just going to pick everything inside this integral and cross my fingers that this u sub is going to work. This is supposed to be just like a short little exercise that proved how good math was. I've, I've dug myself in the biggest corner ever. Oh man, 4t minus 6. I cannot believe this is working. If this works, if this works, everybody gets an A. Wait, I gotta change my limits of integration. If I get 0 this time, everybody gets an F. Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Oh my god. Ah. Uh... This is the best math problem I've ever made in my whole life. I moved this particle along two different paths. Well, I didn't move it. Gravity moved this particle along two different paths, and it turned out to be the same amount of work. So this example does confirm, it doesn't prove it, but it does confirm that um, the mathematical models that we have set up here are operating as intended. Okay, so all of that, the, the point is actually that that insanity that I just did is really the hard way. In the video on gradient fields, I actually prove that uh, the gradient of this scalar function is the vector valued function. So usually you put the small thing on bottom and the big thing on top. Um, so here we're going to put where we started at 1, 2 uh, to where we stopped at 1, 0. I'm using the fundamental theorem of line integrals because I, I love it. So I get 1 minus 1 over the square root of 5. Um, so here is an example that illustrates that um, if your vector field is the uh, gradient of some scalar valued function, 
then first of all, the path that you take doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the endpoints. And if you want to get the answer, all you need to do is plug uh, the endpoints into the scalar value function and subtract just like the fundamental theorem of calculus.